Are you worn out and need, a care, need to find a caregiver, but the coronavirus has you really nervous about it? We learned that in the support group meeting this morning. Do you even know what you want or what you're looking for in a caregiver? Does a caregiver just sit around until the person that you've hired the caregiver for, or unless you are the hiree, um, do they just sit around and do nothing until you need them? Or what do caregivers do? Good afternoon. I am Joe Rosen, president of Parkinson's Resource Organization, and I am here to tell you things to know right now. These are concerns and questions we've covered in home care agencies earlier in our video um, sequences. But today I am so pleased and so proud to be introducing you to my good friend, Rihanna McCree, who I have known for 20 plus years. She's a registered nurse and she is the owner of Cambrian Home Care, um, one of our wellness villagers. And I must tell you that, um, and, and I'm proud and pleased to say that of all of the recommendations that we've given in all of the years that we've been um, referring people to her, we have not had a, a complaint. So that means she's really on top of things. And I know that that's just the way she is. So Rhiannon, welcome. And thank you so much for taking your time and joining us today. Of course, thank you very much. Happy to help. Good, good. So with COVID-19 upon us, our members have voiced concerns about hiring caregivers right now, even though they need them desperately. How would you respond? Well, understood. I mean, every, uh, it, their fears are well understood. There is so much about this that we don't know, isn't there? Um, but I can share with you what we have done. And so maybe that, that will, would help. So the first thing that we did was to put together a task force. And the task force is made up of a social worker and nurses. So they had a plan. So the plan number one was screening. So you've got the screening of both caregivers. caregivers and the clients, the patients, right? Um, so you can imagine if you've got thousands of calls to make every week of, of services coming up the next week, um, that's, that's a variety of calls that people, A, don't pick up, yeah. right? That's, that's, that's how it is now. Um, and so you have to repeat the calls uh, afternoon and evening in order to get to talk to everybody. And we have a specific questionnaire that's for those screenings. And then the supplies. We have always given gloves out, Joe, um, but the, the, the masks um, became very much an essential part and so does the sanitizing. We have been training our caregivers for a long time in simple infection control. I'm old fashioned nurse, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hair up, short nails, all of these things that are important in times like this. And the hand washing. We've been talking about the hand washing for a long, 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 long time. So, uh, but the caregivers need training on what you do when you get to the house because the doorknob of the front door is one place right in the very beginning, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it's big communication, it's big training, it's communicating by email, by text, by video, all kinds of different ways of communicating with a caregiver. And then understanding the tasks when they get to the home. Um, all of those things should make you more comfortable in having somebody in the home. Um, but you and I both know that it doesn't always match. The chemistry doesn't always match in pre-COVID or during COVID. So that's the benefit of going through an agency because you can ask for that person not to come into your home and you can have a different person. Oh, very good point. Yes, because people sometimes think that just because they went through an agency that they have to choose number one and that they don't have any other choices. 
Um, I, I love that idea. Thank you for saying that. So I, I think all of those things uh, have helped us be successful so far. So do um, the caregivers have the same kind of fears as the person hiring your services? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100% of our caregivers are not working right now. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because of some of them have fears. You, some of them have fears, and there is a group of dedicated, loyal caregivers who are willing to even go into the homes of the COVID-positive client. So, so remember, we oh, have... Yeah, we pray for those people. Hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, a couple of the things that I'd like to share with you is that... Um, Family members, when they go into the home of the client, that is one fear that our caregivers have voiced, is they're not socially distancing, they're not doing the six feet, because they're in the home of their loved one. Uh-huh, uh-huh, makes and sense. So the yeah. caregiver is in a bad situation. She either has to say, let me go to another room, let me go outside while you're in the home. So that's one thing that we have helped the caregivers with. Okay, it makes it very awkward, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And so the other fear that they've had is some clients don't want them to use the disinfectant that they have in the home um, for whatever reason. So that's another uh, issue or issues that we've had to deal with to protect the caregiver. So you're right, caregivers have feelings too. Yes, I mean, and I know how cautious you are with and for them. Um, what the world doesn't know are, I mean, you are such an advocate, not only for the caregiver, um, but also for the, for the person needing the service, but um, for the world to know that Rhiannon is someone who has advocated for laws and changes in laws, et cetera, um, and, and is just always out in the forefront, and it's no wonder she runs such an incredible agency. So let's just ask you, Rhiannon, um, how would somebody prepare, now that they, they currently have some time on their hands anyway, how would they prepare to hire a caregiver? What questions should they be putting on a paper to ask you or to tell you about? Well, I would say twofold. One is the question to ask us or any company, um, making sure what, that they're in fact employees, that we are totally responsible for them. Oh, fabulous. So we'll get to that. I mean, the difference between an employee agency and a referral agency. Okay, but um, what other question? That's a great one. What else would they ask? And then they need to ask, what are we doing for those caregivers to protect them? Right? Yes. Um, so then the, the biggest question after that is... I need to do a plug here. I'm so sorry. But I need to tell the world also that Rhiannon has a caregiver university that she has created to teach her caregivers. It's just an amazing place. I, I, they host our, one, our Long Beach support group meetings. And so we get to go into this university. And, and she has rooms set up as if they were another somebody else's house. So she has a bathroom so that they teach the caregivers how to transfer people to and from the john or from the toilet. They have a bedroom to teach them how to transfer them in and out of bed and from the bed to a commode or bed to the chair. They have a living room. And, they, uh, and, and the incredible thing is she even teaches them how to set a table. And that is so, it, these are such important things to me that someone would come to my house, know how to set a table properly. So your caregiver university is incredible, but yes, taking care and protecting the caregivers is critical too. So carry on, sorry. Yeah, so the caregiver needs to know what to do when they get to the house. So one cannot just expect the caregiver to do it exactly like you do. So I am very big on having a nice list of the tasks that you want done and have them done the way you want them done. Because even you and I, Joe, will help somebody out of the shower or out of the bath in a different way. Yes. You know, yeah. maybe somebody wants to put the towel 
down by the shower. And we're going, uh-uh, that's very slippery. We're not sure. However, that's the way some people want it done. That's just a simple um, example. So really telling the caregiver what they want. To be successful, the caregiver needs to know. Well, so the agency does too. So do you want a man or a woman? Do you want, um, is ethnicity a, a, a critical part? Do they cook? Do they not cook? Do they drive? Do they not drive? Do they drive your car? Do they drive their own car? I can only imagine a ton of questions that need to yeah. be asked. Yeah, the whole intake process is all those questions and you're so right, there's so many of them. Um, and then we create the service plan. So you need the, all this information for the service plan for everybody to be on the same page. Um, yeah, that's the only way for success. So, you know, I asked a question early on, what do these caregivers do when they're, are they always in need? Uh, does, the, does the person, the, the, Ill, the ill person, do they, if they don't need them all the time, what does the caregiver do? Sit around, read a book, sit around, watch television? What do they do? Well, there's usually plenty of things for them to do. Um, and, you know, part of this is companionship, especially now. Oh, yes. I mean, because everybody is just, um, we're, we're all looking for support and for just talking and, and yes, um, this, yeah. And this six feet thing is just like amazing. It's very hard for me. I'm a hugger, as you know. And um, so not being able to touch people all the time is really hard for me. But let's go back to that other question that you had about, or, or the statement that you started making, that there are an, age, an employment agency versus referral. Can you put a little light on that? Well, by the name referral agency, it means that you, the family, are the employer. So for some people, Joe, that is kind of easy. They have access to uh, insurances or um, protective um, insurances, and they know how to do the taxes on the employee. Um, for some people, that is fairly easy, but not for all. And, and so that's a very important thing to remember, that you are the employer. Um, and then the whole safety issue of um, when there is no insurance, what happens when there is an injury? What happens when the caregiver is no longer needed and, and there's unemployment issues? Yes, um, we bring that up all the time. That Because um, I don't think many people who, who hire their caregivers on the side, if you will, understand the consequences if something goes askew, if something goes wrong. But I think that there are many people listening to you right now saying, oh, but you know, I've been very successful in hiring somebody to clean my house and I just pay them and everything is fine. Caregiving is different. Caregiving, there's a whole safety issue. You and I already mentioned that if the caregiver goes off to school, to a vacation, gets sick, that's why you have an agency because they can send you somebody else. Um, and you know, you mentioned laws and regulations earlier. There are so many new ones. Um, Especially in the state of California, absolutely. That's right. Yes, just to make it, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, our time is up, Rhiannon, but that doesn't mean that it's really up because what we need to tell the audience today is that Rhiannon will be a participant in our village meetings, which are our virtual support group meetings. So when we have our villagers come in, we'll have three speakers at a time and Rhiannon will be one of them and times in the future. So please pay attention because there will be more questions that you as a participating audience can ask of her. And, um, and I'm so grateful. Uh, we've launched these meetings this month, which is Parkinson's Awareness Month. And I cannot tell you, Rhiannon, how much I appreciate knowing you and having you on our side and giving our audience the information. It's always so good. And I really appreciate you. Well, like you said, it takes a village. It, it really does.